everybody, I'm Jayma Malney and I am going to be showing you how to add some easy shimmer and shine and some unexpected wow to your projects in a very easy way. I get to share close to my heart's newest metallics or specialty papers with you. We're going to be looking at the new ore and pearl papers, the new holographic papers, and some of the new glitter papers. And I may sprinkle in some other specialty papers as well. So I'm gonna go and head over to my desk in a minute and I'm gonna show you the different papers, point out some features of them, and then we're gonna get into some techniques and products that we can use with them. Specifically tonight, the holographic paper, what kind of markers and pads and mediums that we can use on the holographic paper. All right, so we are going to start out with the ore, pearl, and glitter papers. So the first thing I wanna point out about these, the ore and the pearl papers, is they are really heavy duty. They are thicker than cardstock. They are like a really thick, nice weight cardstock. I don't know exactly what the pounds is in, but it's thicker than our gold and silver foil paper. So it's it just makes a really nice, substantial, Cricut cut, die cut, card base, anything you wanna do. It's just a really nice quality. So, and you see all that beautiful shimmer. And so this is the black ore. Here is the copper ore, which will be wonderful for fall, all of our fall projects. And then the white pearl. It's more of a pearly finish than having shimmer like the other two, but it's still shiny and so beautiful, still heavy weight. And we're gonna be doing some fun techniques with all of these. And then these are two of the glitter papers that I have. This is the Bluebell, of course, and then the Desert Rose. There's also Scarlet, Ballerina, Evergreen, and Sapphire that are new, vibrant, beautiful colors. So I just love using glitter paper for just pops of pizzazz in my projects. And one thing I have learned with all of these specialty papers is a little bit goes a long way. And because these papers are specialty, they are a little bit higher price point. And so we want our supplies to stretch a little further, right? So um, it's great that they patch pack such a punch and that we can use them sparingly but I will also show you some ways that you can just go all out and not necessarily use them sparingly. All right so next up I want to show you the holographic papers and I've kept them with their zip top bags just so that I'm sure to tell you the right name because they change color so easily. It just, um, I wanna show you side by side with the catalog because you guys, you have to see these in person. The catalog does not do it justice. So this um, sunbeam looks like it's going to be yellow and it is, I mean, right here it kind of looks yellow, but depending on how you turn it and what you have it next to, it can look orange too. And it can even pick up some pinks. I'm wearing a pink shirt right now. Well, it's not really, I mean, you can see my pink shirt there, but um, it, it really picks up the colors that it is with. And so if you pair it with something more yellow, it's gonna look more yellow. If you pair it with something more orange, it's gonna look more orange. And so here is the sunbeam. And by the way, all of these packs, the specialty papers come with three per pack. Now, this is the Twinkle Toes. So right here, it looks kind of purple. So if I bring it, kind of show it in the different lights, you're seeing um, probably purpley pink. In the catalog, it looks more pink, but it does pick up a lot more pink depending on what it's with. Sometimes it looks a little orange. And then now you put it next to the Majestic, which looks more purple. It looks kind of like a purpley blue here in the catalog, but in person, it looks more purpley pink. So to me, this is more of a purpley pink this is more of a pinky purple, maybe pinky orange. It really just depends. And whatever you pair it with, it's gonna pick up that color. So um, it's just, they're just gorgeous. And they, I've been having so much fun with them. And then I thought I would also compare them to 
the Oasis and the Dreamy that we already have. You can see how different those are. So the Dreamy um, really is more of that iridescent. It picks up lighter pinks and purples and it picks up whatever color it's with as well, but it's more of your iridescent. And then the Oasis has more of a green tinge to it, maybe a green with some blue. So um, those are the bulk of the papers that I'm going to be working with. Just wanted to show you them in their in their all their glory in their full pages and show you that they do especially the holographic papers look so much different um, than the catalog next i decided to play around with various tools and inks on the holographic paper so first i used it in the embossing folder because i had a feeling that would look awesome and it does and then i went on to thin cuts and it cut beautifully and by the way i will be showing you close-ups of all of these um, after i go through this sped up version of the process i'm going to show you close-up versions of how all of this turned out so then I used the Cricut and that worked as well. There is a specific holographic setting for your Cricut. Then I went on to ink pads and first I tried some that I didn't think would work as well. The black dye ink and uh, that was wet still after a little bit. I heat set it and it was still wet. So it is a water-based ink and water-based is typically not going to work on this sort of plasticky material. Then I went on to the intense black ink and I really wasn't sure about this with the formulation and um, at first touch it was wet and came off easily so then I heat set it and it did dry however it doesn't have the most vivid image and doesn't show up super well. Then next I went on to the archival ink, which I actually thought would work better than it did. But what happened was even after several times and a very steady hand, it kept sliding just slightly so that the line image had a thicker line than it's meant to have. So that did also heat set and dry, but again, it's a thicker line and um, it doesn't show up as well as one of the other options I'll show in a little bit. So next I tried the Distress Oxide ink, which is a blend of dye and pigment ink. So I knew that I could heat emboss it on normal paper so I thought I would try that and it was an afterthought so I didn't use my antiseptic powder bag and I got a lot of stray um, powder on there so then I tried the Versamark ink and then did remember to use my antiseptic powder bag did the Versamark ink and then embossing powder but the Versamark ink had a similar effect as the archival ink where it kind of slid around a little bit and made a thicker outline of the lines than it should have. Um, and then the um, anti-static powder bag didn't work too well on the holographic paper. So I saved for last what I thought would work the best and it did. This is the stays on ink which is meant to be used on non-porous surfaces such as plastic and metal and it did work well and here's a little comparison of all three of those inks and again I will show you more close up a real time comparison of all of these that I'm trying out but I wanted to show you my process. All right so here is the Le Pen journaling pen this is what close to my heart used to carry and then i tried the new close to my heart journaling pen to see how it compared both of those did not really dry very well and then i also tried a sharpie which dried immediately super well so i keep trying even um, after some time has lapsed with those journaling pens and both of them um, still keep coming up wet. So I set that aside to dry and see what happens. Then I moved on to alcohol inks, which I had a feeling would work and they worked even better than I expected. They write beautifully. I tried doing a bunch of lines because I was wondering if it would be like dry erase markers are when you draw a line and then you go over it again, it kind of erases it and I didn't know if that would happen and it didn't it worked well in case you ever need to do that and then I tried the true black 
alcohol marker, which is part of the Triblend or part of the Spectrum Noir line, and it worked really well. So I'm going to compare it here in a minute next to the Sharpie. Both of those worked similarly as far as how quick they dry, they don't smear, but you can see there the true black just really looks sharper. Now this is the next day and the journaling pen and the Le Pen drawing pen are still wet and still smudging. So I actually didn't try heat setting them. I would be curious to know if that helped, but just not the best option for writing on holographic paper. I then tried the shimmer brush, which I had a feeling wouldn't work and it didn't, it just wiped right off. And then I tried the embossing pens, which did beat up a little bit, but I tried embossing anyway. And um, they do emboss, but as we learned already, the embossing powder, the stray strands kind of stick and embossing isn't the best on the holographic paper. I thought I would show you close up how amazing the embossing folder works on the holographic paper. And then of course we've got thin cuts. You can see the stitch lines and everything. The thin cuts cut beautifully as does the Cricut cut. So what I did was I turned this upside down when I cut it so that that little ridge that always happens with the Cricut um, is gonna be facing down so it looks more clean and finished. Now I tested several different um, black stamp pads and the stays on is what worked the best. I'll show you a comparison again. This is the intense black. This is the archival black. So the intense black had to be dried. It's really hard to see on here and that's just part of the issue of the intense black not working as well. It had to dry and it gives more of a matte finish on it and it's, it doesn't show up as well. And then the archival also had to be dry and it slid around on the glossy paper more. So you've got that thicker line. Stays on worked so well. It gave a nice crisp image. Um, it was the perfect thickness and it's nice and dark and black. It didn't slide around. So I thought that the stays on was the best choice for stamping onto this type of paper. Now I tried embossing on the paper and it was also hard to see in the last segment that the embossing powder, um, this little stray strands stick really badly to the sides. Now the first one that I did, which was actually this one, the Distress Oxide, I forgot to use my anti-static powder bag. And so that obviously stuck a lot, just like it would on a regular paper, but even more so on here. And then I did use the anti-static powder bag on this one, but it's still stuck. So embossing is probably not the best choice on the holographic paper, but you can see that the Distress Oxide ink gave um, more of a realistic image as far as um, this one slid just a tiny bit and made a thicker, Im um, a thicker image than the stamped image actually is. So there is a close up of those results. And then this was the first test I did with the Le Pen journaling pen, the CTMH journaling pen, and a Sharpie. The Sharpie was very permanent and worked well, so that would be a good choice. However, then I tried the True Black, and it is just so much more intense, and um, hopefully you can see how much better that actually turned out kind of hard because there's so much reflection in this paper you see in my phone there but the true black which is one of the alcohol markers really works better the tri blend also works well you could use any of the colors of the tri blends i'm sure you could also use the metallic markers i just didn't have those um, to try um, they are also alcohol based the, the le pen journaling pen smeared a lot the CTMH journaling pen, probably if you heat set it to dry it, you could get a result sort of like the intense black and the archival black inks where once dried it would set, but it's just not a real intense black color. 
this would be your best choice if you want a really dark, intense color. All right, and then finally, we've got the Close to My Heart embossing pens, which are water-based and they just bead it up on here, much like our regular dye-based markers or dye-based um, ink pads did. So I could have just wiped that off without um, anything even staying, just like I did the regular ink pads and just like I did the shimmer brush. They're all water-based and they're not gonna stay on here well. One last option to show you because I got my metallic markers after doing the last demo is that they do work well on the holographic paper. It did take a little bit of time to dry. So especially the brush tip, um, it took a little bit longer to dry. So this is the bullet tip, this is the brush tip and um, they do dry and show up nicely though. So that's another option on the holographic paper. So that's the result of what I tried. I hope this was helpful for you. And in the coming days, we are going to be working with the holographic paper and the other specialty papers to create some beautiful projects with them. So stay tuned for video number two tomorrow, where we will implement some of these techniques with the holographic paper to create some beautiful artwork. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.